Visit SailRight.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. In this tutorial video, we'll be showing you how to make and install your own roller shade in an RV. As you can see, this roller shade is controlled by a ball chain. Select your roller shade kit at Sailrite and also the fabric. This video is part of our Airstream Argosy renovation. We'll be renovating an Airstream from top to bottom, inside and out. Join us for this exciting video series. The bedroom of this RV will be transformed from this to this. And in this video, we're going to concentrate on the roller shade. Let's get started and show you how to make your own roller shade for an RV. First, we'll take some measurements of the window to select our kit and the fabric required. The roller shade that we measured uh, for this is 57 inches wide by 32 inches tall or high. We know that our desired roller shade needs to be at least 57 inches wide, so we'll go to the Sailrite website and type in roller shade in the search. Here you'll see various size kits. We need a kit that's at least 57 inches in width, so we're going to select the 60 inch one. To select your fabric, hover over fabric and click roller shade fabric. Then you'll see a list of brands that'll work perfect. We're going to choose Pfeiffertex. And now you can pick your color and style of shade fabric. We're going to choose Pfeiffertex Plus, which has a tighter weave than the standard Pfeiffertex. The width of our shade is wider than the width of the fabric, so what do you do? Here, we'll explain it. The roller shade that we measured uh, for this is 57 inches wide by 32 inches tall or high, and we have a 54 inch wide fabric. So 54 inches is not going to achieve our width, but our fabric is a solid color, as you can see here, so we can run the fabric across the running uh, length of the fabric to achieve our width measurement. And since our height measurement is 32 inches, all I need to uh, add to that is the 12 extra inches plus the cutoff for the strip at the bottom that's three quarter of an inch. So I have plenty of fabric uh, because of the fact that this fabric is a 54 inch wide fabric if I run the width along the running length of the fabric. Why do we need to add 12 inches to the desired height of the shade? That extra fabric must stay wrapped around the roller when the shade is extended all the way down. Now that we have the roller shade kit, we can now mount the brackets to our desired location. You'll notice that there are two sets of brackets. One has a longer mounting surface and it can be used, or if you need a shorter mounting surface, in other words, you're putting it on a head rail that's not as wide, you can use a shorter one, so it's your choice. I'm gonna come one inch outside of here. This is just my preference. I'm gonna mark it very lightly, and then I'm gonna use a straight edge to come up and to make sure that I have that mount so that it's nice and straight here, and then I'm gonna mark here with my pencil and I'm gonna put that one inch away from the edge here on the other side as well. So I can mount the bracket to the wall like this. There's my line, right like that, or even up higher, or I can mount it here. And this is what I think I'm going to do because I believe that this should be stronger than the wall. Um, so I'm gonna put it right here and it is in line with the line that I struck here, and I'm just going to screw it at that location. The screws are included with the uh, kit. We are securing it in wood, so we do not need to use a wall anchor. If you secure it in drywall or in masonry, you'll need to use the there appropriate anchor. Do the same for the opposite side. Now we'll take a measurement from bracket to bracket, and we're measuring from the top of the bracket as seen here. Then we'll measure the bracket on the opposite side, and it reads 57 inches. We're measuring from bracket to bracket at the upper portion where we mount the bracket, not where the roller will be. We'll be using this measurement, but we'll have to cut our fabric slightly shorter. We'll talk about that in the next chapter. If you're having to join fabric together to make your desired size, the seam must go horizontal. Going vertical would result in large bulges when the shade fabric is wrapped around the upper roller. Now usually we have to fair up the cut edge. This is the cut edge from the uh, 
Sayerite company, but I'm cutting along the bottom edge and the factory edge is fairly straight. This is the bottom drop rail and there's a channel in here that accepts the fabric of your choice. So this fabric strip is cut to three quarter inch and it'll slide into here. So I'm just going to use the factory edge and not fair it up. If you're cutting off of this edge, this edge will not be cut straight. So you need to um, square this edge um, if you're cutting off that. Now I like to use a rotary cutter and a cutting mat on the bottom side and a clear acrylic ruler because this just makes fast work of cutting the three quarter inch strip because I can see right through this uh, clear acrylic ruler and this cuts so beautifully as you can see here. So we're going to cut all along the running length of this Pfeiffer Tex Plus fabric. Our three quarter inch strip is being cut along the running length of the fabric, but yours may go across the width depending on the shade that you're constructing. Our width is 57 inches and the instructions say to take away 1.25 inches from that and we're going to cut our width to 55 and 3 quarter inches. So we want our shade to be 32 inches and we need to add 12 inches to that according to the instructions. So we need to cut it at a 44 inch height. This is the cut edge from Sayorite and we're using it a, a uh, T-square here to make sure that this edge is perfectly straight. Looks like Sayorite did a pretty good job cutting it, but I never want to rely on that. So I'm going to mark a line here to make sure that this edge is perpendicular to this edge that we cut the three quarter inch strip off of. Pfeiffertex plus fabric does not unravel much, so we can cut nice crisp edges and not have to hem it. With a roller shade, you wouldn't want to hem because it would balk up the uh, roller shade as it rolls up. You can use scissors to do this, but a rotary cutter definitely cuts a nice crisp edge. We'll mark our fabric to the correct size for width and height, then we'll cut it to size. If you don't use a cutting mat on the bottom side, your rotary cutter will be destroyed instantly. So make sure you use a cutting mat like we are here. To make sure your fabric is square, measure from corner to corner. This is 71. This should be equal. If it's not, then you need to re-square it up again. Yep, 71. It's perfect. Cutting the roller and the drop rail is next, and that can be done with a hacksaw. I have the aluminum shade roller placed so that it's flush with the edge of the fabric along its width. And this is our width and I'm going to mark it with a marker so I know exactly where it needs to be cut with a hacksaw so it's flush with this edge. There's where I need to cut. Do the exact same thing with the uh, bottom rail. Mark it so that it's flush with the edges. Now you can just simply cut it with a hacksaw. I've got a second helper here so we can hold it down. And we'll do the same thing with the bottom rail. It's aluminum, so it cuts pretty easily. As long as you have a good blade in your hacksaw. Now we'll attach the fabric to the roller via the double-sided tape. For a regular wound shade, stick the top side to the adhesive tape, so we'll pretend this is the outside surface. For an irregular wound shade, you would stick the underside to the tape. So th if this were the underside, it'd go like that. Ours doesn't have a right side or a wrong side, so it doesn't really matter. This illustration should help show how a regular versus a reverse wind roller shade works. We'll peel off this uh, transfer paper and that reveals the sticky tape. So see how I've stuck it so that it's flush and right on that line. And then I'll just follow down the length of this shade sticking it over top of that line because otherwise it won't roll straight. Pretty easy. Once it's on there, just simply roll it up so it's fairly taut.
Next, onto the end of the fabric, we'll install the bottom drop rail. The blue plastic insert tape has an adhesive on the back side. Simply peel off the paper, revealing the double-sided tape, and stick it to the bottom edge of the fabric. So it's flush with the bottom edge. Cut off the excess so that it's flush. Then we're going to staple in the center of the blue tape, very close to the uh, raw edge, with a good stapler, and about every three to four inches apart, again, in the center of the blue tape, or as close as possible to the center. Doesn't have to be exact. All the way down its length. And then make sure you put one all the way on the end, very close to the opposite end, as we did here. There are a couple ways that this can be inserted into the bottom rail. This is the way I like to do it. And what, I like, what I'm showing you is a little example piece so that you can see how the fabric uh, comes around here, folds around here, and comes up here. This way, when you put tension on it, it's really not going to come loose because the fabric's actually folded under here. So we're going to install it just like you see here. This is our outside surface because we're going to have our shade with our fabric up against our window like this. You, you can also have it like this and do it that way. And this could be your outside surface if you want the fabric to roll over the top. We don't want it that way. So we're going to lay it like this. And I'm going to take this and fold it here at the end like that. And initially this will be a little bit difficult to install but I'm going to start it at the top here and push this in and it'll be a little bit stubborn but once it goes in there it's not bad at all because I'm forcing the fabric to kind of take a turn here and there's not a lot of room in here either. So there now I've got it inserted and now it's just a matter of pulling it through. It's a little stubborn this way, but boy, it is, it is the way to do it to make sure that it's not going to come loose. Pulling it and folding it and then pulling it. And you might want to get a second helper to do this. Now we'll take our three quarter inch strip and feed it through this channeling down here, which gives it a nice finished look. Now, if you have a pattern, you have to make sure that the pattern is matched up when you do this. Ours is, does not have a pattern, so I don't have to worry about that. And you'll have some excess because it was uh, taken off of the roll before we cut it to size. So these are end caps that go into that channel. And sometimes I glue them in place um, because I have had them come out. But if you fold the fabric back, and kind of tuck it inside here that creates a little bit more of friction so the fabrics folded back here and then you can push these end caps over the end of, of the bottom rail and uh, it should hold fairly well like that and again if you want you can glue them in place or you could take a small screw drill a hole in the bottom and uh, insert a screw uh, I don't think it's necessary. I've cut the excess off of this and I'll just push this in and we'll follow that same procedure here on this opposite side or end, I should say. We're going to calculate for the length of ball chain, cut it to size, and then insert it in the clutch. The height of the shade, which is 32 or the length, length they call it, 32 times 1.6, because we're going to cut the ball chain, is 51.2. Now this can be uh, varied if you'd like, if you'd like the chain shorter or if you have a very high window and you want to be able to grab the chain easily then you can cut the chain, the, uh, the ball chain longer if you'd like. 51.2, I'm going to just come close to it a second round. This is our clutch system and we want to operate the shade on the right hand side and it's going to come down basically like this. So this is my back side here because it's going to be like this. So what I'm going to do, you can see here there are notches in here and there's a, a one notch that's different than all the rest and that's this one right here. It has a spot for two balls to go in it. This just has is a one slot. 
So what I'm going to do, since this is the back side, back here, I'm going to insert the ball chain underneath this bar and into this two hot hole slot. Now this rotates with a little bit of stiffness, so I'm going to position that ball up towards the top here and then just feed it on and around. And then I'm going to pull this down once it gets down to here and then I can pull on the chain and leave about five inches somewhere around around that much. So that is the back side as you can see here and that's what we want. This is the warning tag. I guess if you were selling these you'd want to put this on the shade. I'm not selling them. I read it carefully and I'm going to be careful not to choke any child with it by keeping the children away. We're going to take the ball chain connector and insert the end of a ball in one end and the end of a ball of the other end and then just close the cover. It's a little stiff when it's brand new so I have to force it to close. There we go. Bam. Nice. So we want this connector to be about five inches down right about there from the bottom here to there and then this goes on with the shade. The shade needs to be rolled up so that the connector uh, doesn't run into the hardware. And then you need to see the ridges in, inside of here, these two ridges. They needed to go in one of these slots, either here or here. It doesn't matter which one. Uh, this one looks like it's the closest with it rolled up. So I'm going to make sure that those slots go in that groove here. And then this is going to take quite a bit of force to get it inside of here. So the shade's rolled up, as you can see, all the way up. And this, this piece is about five inches from the back side of the shade. And then I'm going to pound it in place. And you can expect some of the plastic to basically be rolled off of here, the, these ridges. It's going to kind of shave it. And there you go. So here are the ridges here. So we just need to put them in between those ridges. And then we start to hammer it down in place as well. There we go. So you can see the end here. It has a little bracket that has little prongs. And those prongs go into the end bracket here. So I'm just going to push it in there and make sure that they are seated by pushing down. So this end just pushes in and will snap in as such. Good. I'm going to raise the shade to where I want it to stop. You can set this anywhere you want. I'm going to have it stop all the way at the top here. I'm going to grab the ball chain and I'm going to put a stopper on this ball chain. And there is an opening at the bottom so you just push this on and then roll it around like that. So the ball chain is installed. So now when I raise the shade, it stops at that location. Now let's determine where we want it to stop at the bottom side. Let's see. Yeah, that right there. So now I'm going to take my finger on this side and I'm going to hold on to that ball and now pull it out and I'm going to install one here and then just snaps into place. So now, when I lower the shade, it stops at that location right where I want it to. Okay. So I've installed one screw into this clip. This is a safety clip. And it just goes on like that. And we want it in a position that still makes it easy for us to operate the shade. So you don't want it super tight, because otherwise you can have problems. And I want it over here, um, so it's coming almost straight down. So I'm going to screw it in at that location and hopefully going to hit something fairly solid in our wall. So that's too tight. That's about perfect. So this is a uh, preventer for children from getting hurt. Now yeah, that's good right there. Yep, we can still move it nicely. I'll put a screw in the bottom as well. When the shade is lowered all the way to the bottom, you'll notice the wall is not perfectly 
horizontal. It has a slight curve to it, so the shade at the bottom sticks out. Because of that, we're going to be installing guidelines, which is an optional step. Now this roller shade, when I lower it, you'll notice that it goes down, obviously, perfectly horizontal. But the trailer wall is back. So it's really kind of like right at, above your head. Now the way to resolve that is to uh, install a line with eye screws. So this is only one half. So I've, I've got an eye screw up here and an eye screw over here with a cord lock uh, system here so I can tension it. So I, I haven't installed it on the other end, but watch what happens. So if I put this under tension, which will come across the top of the shade, now when I lower the shade, you can see that this side is up against the wall. So we're going to do that on the opposite side and show you how this is done. I've lowered the shade here, and what we need to do is determine where we want that uh, eye screw to be screwed into the back of the shade rail first. And I think it should be right about here. This is a, a preference more than anything else. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to position it basically right there in the middle. And to do that I want to use a drill bit bit that is obviously smaller than the uh, screw eye threads. So I'm going to drill through just the back side. This is an aluminum rail, so it's easy to drill through. So we're through. And then I'm going to take a screw eye, and I'm going to thread it through there. So as you can see, the hole size is just about perfect. It's just creating uh, the threads that I need. So there's the eye screw, and I want to come directly down from it and have it be positioned in about the same place as the other side, which is right about here. We've already measured it so we know. So I'm going to screw one in here. So we want this one to go uh, horizontal like that. We want this one to be uh, like that so the line can run straight up. Now it's pretty easy to take this down, and we even have our, our uh, chain bead still attached. Just raise this side, push it over to that side because it's got a spring-loaded end, and then just set it down. Now there are all kinds of holes up here from previous uh, applications. We don't want to put it down here because it'll come in contact with our roll. We want to put it as high as possible. That hole is actually perfect, but it's too big for the... Uh, the eye screw that I have. So I'm going to just put one right beside it. But being up here should allow us plenty of room. And even if you go in at an angle, kind of like what I'm doing, um, it's still going to work. You can twist it with a, an awl. I'm just using an, a, a drill bit. So we want this to be facing so that it's across, because the line's going to go across the top of the roller shade. So we already have line installed on that one over there. This is a leech line that you can get from Sarite. And we're going to put it through this one and feed it down. Now we need to put the shade back up. And you really want to start with this end, not the spring-loaded end. And get it installed in its bracket. And then I'll have somebody on that end install it in that bracket. Run it through the eye screw there, and then you can let this relax. I'm going to open up the body to the orb and feed the line through, and then just pull the orb all the way up to our eye screw. And then I'll tension it. It doesn't need a ton of tension, just needs to be fairly taut. There we go. And now she's tight, and what I'll do is I'll take a hot knife, and I'm just going to leave a little bit of extra line just in case I need need some uh, sometime, and this will just seal the end. You can use scissors and, and burn the end of the line too with that, and there we go. Okay, so now 
that line keeps that shade up against our curved surface. Now the only thing you see up here, you do see this line that's going across here, but it's really light and it really blends into most anything. We uh, only have it in white, but you got to have the eye screws about this high, otherwise the eye screw may impede with the roll of fabric. So that's perfect. Here's what our RV bedroom looked like before, and here's what it looks like afterwards, after we're done with the shade and many other projects. Those other projects will be coming soon. Be sure to subscribe to be notified when they become available. Coming up next is the materials and tools list. You'll find all kinds of fabrics that will work great for roller shades. We used Vifertex Plus. Sayrite also carries many different sizes of roller shade clutch kits. Check it out at the Sayrite website. If you enjoyed this video, click the link in the description below or at the icon at the top right to check out other projects in the Airstream Argosy renovation series. I'm Eric Grant, and from all of us here at Sayrite, thanks for watching.